Hello. Today I'm going to be making enclosures for some praying mantises. These praying mantises to be exact. Hello and welcome to my channel. Like I just said, today I'm going to be making some enclosures for some praying mantises, which I have more of than just the four I showed. I currently have 10 species, possibly thinking of getting some more. We'll see. But today I'm going to be setting up my enclosures for 10 different praying mantises. Well, actually nine. I have one that I'm not setting up an enclosure for today because that will be in a different video. But for the other nine, I'm setting up their enclosures today. So um, let's get started. But first, I need to go to the store. So I'm at the store right now, just grabbing some things for the project, but I want to know if you guys like this, uh, this behind the scenes type of stuff. But I'm going to finish grabbing my stuff, let me know if you guys do, and I'll see you back at home. I'm back from the store, I got my plants and my mesh. I did get a few other things, but those are for a completely different project. The only things I'm going to be using today that I got is the mesh and the plants. So. Uh, now, with all that stuff out of the way, it's time to take a look at the enclosures. As you saw at the beginning of the video, these are the enclosures that I'm going to be using. These are the Zilla micro habitats. I've got seven small, six large that are down there. Normally I would, you know, do a DIY and make my own and I actually did test one out. Here it is. I really like the way it looks. It, it functions pretty well, um, pretty simple to make but it just, it kind of costs quite a bit and the materials are, you know, there's a lot of them and it's just, the fact that I have to make nine of these, it's not worth it to DIY. So I just decided to just buy some. Um, these are fairly expensive, the Zilla ones, but it's worth it so that I don't have to spend two years making these tiny little enclosures. Not to mention I'd have to make big ones and I'd have to make like six, seven of those. It's just, it wasn't worth it in the end, so I decided just to go with these enclosures. So I only have a few of these built right now. I gotta build, um, I think five more of those and then four more of these. Which funny story, I had originally bought some cheap, cheaper knockoff ones that I thought would work because they were, ba they're basically the same thing. Um, you know, just a little cheaper and at the time they looked like the same thing, but I quickly realized that there was a reason they were cheaper. So anyway, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, build these enclosures. Also, the stand that I'm using is the old Mantis rack. I just converted it. And the way I did that was I started by removing the old paneling, then removing both of the shelves. Luckily, I was able to reuse these as they're the same length. So I moved both of those to account for two shelves, but I needed to add a third one. So I laid the stand down on its side, then took some measurements, and then I proceeded to cut another shelf. I considered just completely making a new stand, but not only would that have been expensive, it was also fairly unnecessary. I had most of the materials I needed for this one just laying around, so I thought I'd just, you know, make it out of, you know, whatever I could find. Just anything that fits, anything that would work, and luckily it did. Anyways, after building the third shelf, I attached it in with some screws, then reattached the old paneling. I also cut a few new pieces to account for new paneling. To attach all these paneling pieces, I just used a staple gun with some half inch brad nails. You could also use a nail gun for this, but I just had it so it was easier. Once I got all the paneling on though, I went back and painted everything to bring it back to its original form. Also, like an idiot, I decided that I didn't need to measure the enclosures and just went ahead with the stand. I ended up having to rip off all the paneling and recut the pieces. Then I cleaned it up with some wood filler and paint. Hi there. So the stand is now finished. It still, it doesn't look bad. I mean, it, it covered it up pretty well. Um, some of them were a little bit more difficult because the wood underneath was warped. Yeah, so you can kind of see how this like goes behind it. And I could put a spacer there or something, but there's actually a really simple face to this. So if you subscribe, and it looks all right. It doesn't look as good as I wanted it. So I think I'm just going to give up on the whole project. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. I'm kidding. With the stand finished, the next thing I need to do is build some more of these enclosures, so I'm going to do that, and then we'll move on to the next step. Luckily, the enclosures weren't that difficult to build. They do come with an instruction manual, but instruction manuals are for losers, so I decided just to wing it, and I worked it out myself. No, seriously, they're so self-explanatory, very easy to build. I really like these enclosures for that specific reason. Hold on, guys, you gotta see this. This is cool. So these little rubber bands, focus, thank you. These little clear rubber bands that hold the enclosure together, you see how they're like semi-transparent? If you pull them, they turn white. 
What? It's like magic. Can somebody please explain to me what's going on? It, it gets warm too. That's weird. With my pure fascination of absolutely nothing magical whatsoever out of the way, I continued building the enclosures. The large ones were a little bit more difficult, obviously, because they are larger. But in the end, I was able to get all six of them built. So now we got the enclosures finished, and I originally planned on putting seven up here, but they didn't quite fit. So I have this extra little guy here, and uh, stick around to the end of the video if you want to find out how you could win it. Anyways, before I do anything else, I'm going to put some lights in here, just like the normal, um, the Nikru Classic LED Pluses that I use. I'm going to put those in there, and then we're going to get started on actually setting up the enclosures. Okay, the lights are installed. I did take the one from there. I have another one that I'm going to put on that, but I'm not worrying about those right now. Those are my old Mantis enclosures. I'll use those. Some of the species I have can get upwards of four inches, so I'll use those for them when they get that big. But my other plan for the other ones is just to kind of rotate them. I'm going to have some cups here for the smaller species that can't go in here yet. Once they're old enough, I'll put them in here. And once they get even bigger, go in there and then up there and so on and so forth. So the first thing we need to do in order to start these is make the false bottom. Now I've got some of this leftover egg crate light diffuser that I'm going to use for the large enclosures. Hopefully I have enough. For the smaller ones, I don't know if you can see it, but a lot of these enclosures, they have these like little nub things, like handle doohickeys that like go in. And it kind of screws up the egg crate when you're using it that small. So I think for these, I'm just going to go with sand. It should be good enough. Um, they're not going to get watered a whole lot. Mostly just daily mistings and occasional plant watering. So I think I'm going to use sand for those. And then I'm going to use egg crate for these. In order to make said false bottom, I started by laying the egg crate down on the floor, then setting the enclosure on top of it, and then tracing the outline with a Sharpie. I then used some wire cutters to cut around the egg crate. It's the best tool for that. Did the same to the inside to account for the little nub guys then repeated the process for all the other enclosures. As for the small ones, like I said, I didn't have enough egg crate for it, so I decided to just go with sand, so I just poured a cup into each one. Okay, now that we're at this point where we have all the egg crate false bottoms in the large ones, and then all six of the small ones filled with sand. So the sand is dense enough, really, that like I don't really need a substrate barrier because it's not like the substrate's just gonna fall through. These ones I do need it on though, because if the substrate gets in there, it'll absorb water and it'll become moldy and gross. Before I mix up the substrate, I need to add backgrounds to it. And to do that, I have some of these. These are cork flats or cork tiles. Um, they're from just a random brand, but they got good views. Fairly thin. Um, I'm going to use these, just cut them up into pieces, put them on the back of each enclosure. And again, normally I would do this myself, make my own foam background, but just with the amount that I have to make, it's easier if I just buy something like this that I can just cut up. Put in each enclosure, which I don't know if I'll have enough. I thought I measured, but I also thought I measured those, and I have an extra. So I'm just going to um, cut them to size. They don't have to be perfect, just enough to where they cover the back. I'm going to cut them to size and get the ball in the enclosures. As the idiot just mentioned, I started by laying each enclosure down on the piece, similar to what I did with the egg crate, um, and then just marked around it and cut for the piece. This stuff, if you get a clean cut, it actually cuts extremely well. Um, if you don't get a clean cut, then it doesn't cut extremely well. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. It's actually a very great alternative to a DIY background. Okay, so now the backgrounds are all in. And honestly, I think these look great. It was a little bit difficult to cut, but I mean, overall, they look great. And I'm even, I think I'm even going to include this one in the giveaway. It's got a little sticker saying the top because it's the cleaner edge. But nice little background, good textured one. As you can see, some of these have like, um, you know, horizontal texture, some have vertical. All of these have horizontal. This is the only um, horizontal one, so I can give you guys this piece because I love you. Yeah, so now the next step is to mix up the substrate. Like usual, I just used a typical ABG mix with cocoa fiber, sand, sphagnum moss, and a little bit of... I also did add a little bit of charcoal instead of doing a designated layer. Then I mixed everything up. Okay, so the substrate's all mixed up. This is basically just my normal ABG mix, except this time I've got two-part cocoa fiber instead of the sphagnum moss, just to help retain humidity a little bit better. As you can see in Echo's tank, it's not really doing the best job right now. Hi, Echo. Give her a little pet. We'll let her sleep. But anyway, the substrate's not doing the best job of retaining moisture, so I'm gonna try a little more cocoa fiber this time and make it a little more dense and just should overall help it retain moisture better. So, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the charcoal to that and then I'm going to fill up all of these enclosures and then we can move on to the planes.
Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to escape these bad boys. And to do that, I've got some, some of these. These are two bags of some five piece Mopani wood that I got from the Amazons. Each piece is about four to seven inches, so it should be able to fill up most of these. Um, I have a few other pieces I'll probably use for those, but let's uh, let's get these guys open and see what they look like. Okay, so this piece has mold all over it, so we're not going to use this one, but the rest look pretty good, so I'm going to get the second pack open and see what we're working with. Looks like a deer skull. It's actually a cool piece. Um, I have a few more, too, that I'm going to use in the escape, so uh, let's get to it. So the little guys are all scaped, not very like intricate scaped. Some of them are cool like this one and this one have a little bit of stuff to them. The rest of them are pretty just simple. One important thing with mantises though is to make sure that they have a lot of vertical space. Because mantises, when they grow, they molt. You know how reptiles shed their skin to grow bigger? Mantises do the same except theirs is a lot more involved. They need proper area to hang from. So making sure we get a lot of these, a lot of this like horizontal you know, stuff so that they have that space to actually hang from. I had a, a giant shield mantis in one of these that fell during a mold. That's something that unfortunately can't be avoided that easily, but you can try and prevent it by giving them the proper space to molt. So they should all work fine, have plenty of space, plus they can hang from the plant. So now it's time to do the big ones. I only used one piece, two pieces of this stuff for all that. Because uh, the rest kind of didn't fit. So it'll fit in here though. Let's get these guys escaped. And we're done scaping the big boys. These ones look a little bit better. Some of the scapes are kind of stupid like that idiot over there. And then these guys under here. Now some of them like uh, this one, if I were to blow on it, it'll basically fall over. No, I'm kidding. It It's a little bit wobbly. It would probably be fine, but it's not a risk that I'm willing to take. So some of these points kind of where these two pieces connect, I'm going to just gonna add in some super glue and then uh, hopefully those will stay. Okay, so I'm gonna let these scapes dry a little bit. Um, and while we're doing that, let us prep the plants. These are my plantaloons. Now, in order to prep the plants before adding them directly to the enclosure, sometimes the soil can have a lot of junk in it. So I like to remove the roots from the soil, shake it off, you know, whatever I need to do. Some of them are harder to get off than others, but it doesn't matter as long as you get, you know, the majority off, we'll take them to the sink later and wash them off. And with the magic of editing, it is now later and we are washing off the plants. One important step here is to actually look into what kind of pesticides your plant might have. I unfortunately learned this the hard way and had a mantis pass because of it. So just look into what it might have and how to get rid of it. Um, you know, make sure you wash it thoroughly and you should be good to go. Okay, so the plantaloons are prepped and now we have to get them into these enclosures. Again, I'm probably going to start with the small ones big ones. I'm going to keep it fairly simple. Um, it's kind of the same theme with the whole video, like the amount of these that I have to make. I don't want to go too complicated for all of them. So we're just going to grab a plant like that and put it in like that. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to get these all planted and then, uh, we'll, uh, yeah.
bit of a mess. Okay, guys, we're almost finished. I got all of the enclosures planted. I think they turned out amazing. I got a few final details to add, such as leaf litter. I might add a few little twigs and botanical type things. So I'm gonna add some final details to everything. I got a few like food items and smaller enclosures or like cuppy thingies that I gotta add to that side. And then I'm gonna mist everything down, put the leaf litter in, and then I'll get the mantises in. And uh, then it'll be done. Home stretch. After over $600 spent, months of waiting, the Ultimate Mantis Rack is finally finished. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Um, this project has been a absolute roller coaster for me from, you know, spending the money on it. And, you know, it's been over six weeks now. I've had packages get delayed months, weeks. Um, also the Ghost Mantis that you saw earlier, the little small guy. Um, I'm going to be making him a separate enclosure along with another mantis that I am going to get hopefully soon. That's the only other mantis I'm getting right now. But I really I have a special connection to ghosts because that was my first mantis. I don't know if you remember Phantom, but she was great. Absolutely loved having her. I'm really sad that she's gone. Also, I know for some of you longtime fans, this has been a little bit of a different video. Um, I really want your opinion on it. Let me know you guys enjoy this kind of more like you know me in front of the camera explaining what's happening type deal because I really enjoyed it honestly sometimes when I do the other videos they get a little bit stressful so in terms of the giveaway like I said earlier these small enclosures I had an extra one of these are the Zilla micro habitats this is the small I will also include this cute little cork background that should fit nice and snug in there so in order to enter the only things you have to do is leave a like on this video subscribe to the channel and leave a comment letting me know what you're going to use it for that's all you have to do, and then I'll post a video or a short next week, probably whatever day this video releases, whether it's Saturday or Sunday, and I will announce the winner. Good luck to all of you. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. It means a lot that you stuck around until the end of the video. Let me know if you liked the video. Let me know what your favorite mantis is. And I'll see you all next week for a very special project.